Welcome to Question with Answer. If you're preparing for a Node.js interview in 2025, you're in the right place. In this video, we'll cover the top 10 Node.js interview questions and answers that are most likely to be asked. So let's dive right in. Question 1. What is Node.js and how is it different from traditional web server technologies like Apache? Answer. Node.js is a runtime environment that allows JavaScript to be executed on the server side. Unlike traditional web servers like Apache, which follow a multi-threaded model, Node.js uses a single-threaded, event-driven architecture. This makes it lightweight and efficient, especially for input-output heavy operations such as APIs, file systems, or database access. Node.js uses the V8 JavaScript engine, from Chrome, and operates asynchronously, enabling non-blocking code execution. This is ideal for building scalable applications like chat servers, real-time dashboards, and more. While Apache creates a new thread for every request, Node.js handles thousands of concurrent connections with a single thread, improving performance and scalability. Question 2. What is the event loop in Node.js? Answer. The event loop is the core of Node.js's non-blocking architecture. It allows Node.js to perform asynchronous operations, like reading files or querying databases, without blocking the main thread. When Node.js starts, it initializes the event loop and processes callbacks, timers, input-output events, and more in a continuous cycle. If an operation takes time, like a file read, it's delegated to the system or thread pool, and the main thread continues executing. Once the operation completes, the callback is added to the event queue and executed in the next loop. This mechanism allows Node.js to handle many operations concurrently without creating multiple threads, making it perfect for high-performance, real-time applications. Question 3. What are streams in Node.js and why are they important? Answer. Streams in Node.js are objects that let you read data from a source or write data to a destination in a continuous fashion. There are four types of streams, readable, writable, duplex, both readable and writable, and transform, a duplex stream that can modify data. They are particularly useful when dealing with large amounts of data, such as reading files, processing video, or handling real-time logs. Instead of loading entire data into memory, streams process data in chunks, improving efficiency and performance. This reduces memory usage and latency, making streams a powerful feature for building scalable and fast Node.js applications. Question 4. What is the difference between process.nextic, setImmediate, and setTimeout? Answer. All three, process.nextic, setImmediate, and setTimeout, are used to schedule asynchronous operations in Node.js but differ in timing. Process.nextic, queues a callback to be executed after the current operation, before the event loop continues. It's used for high-priority callbacks. Set immediate, schedules a callback to run on the next iteration of the event loop, after input-output events. It's more suitable for operations that should run after input-output is complete. Set timeout, runs code after a minimum delay, in MS, and can be influenced by system load. Understanding these differences is essential for managing performance and execution order in asynchronous programming. Question 5. What are common JS and ES modules in Node.js? Answer. Common JS and ES modules are two module systems in Node.js. Common JS is the traditional Node.js module format, where modules are imported using require and exported using module.exports. It's synchronous and widely supported. ES modules, introduced with modern JavaScript, use import and export statements and are asynchronous by default. They offer better compatibility with front-end code and support static analysis and tree shaking. From Node.js v14 onward, ES modules are officially supported, but require a.mjs extension or type module in package.json. 
Developers often choose between the two based on project needs and interoperability with modern tooling. Question 6. What is middleware in Node.js and how does it work in Express.js? Answer. Middleware in Node.js, especially in Express.js, refers to functions that have access to the request, req, response, res, and next middleware function, next, in the request response cycle. They are used for tasks like logging, authentication, request parsing, and error handling. Middleware functions can modify req and res objects or end the request response cycle. If not, they must call next, to pass control to the next middleware. Express uses a layered approach where multiple middleware can be chained, offering flexibility and modularity. For example, app use, express.json, is a built-in middleware that parses JSON request bodies. Question 7. How is error handling managed in Node.js? Answer. Error handling in Node.js is crucial, especially due to its asynchronous nature. For synchronous code, standard try-catch blocks can be used. For asynchronous code, callbacks typically follow the Node.js convention of passing an error as the first argument, callback, error, result. In modern async await syntax, try-catch is used to handle errors in asynchronous functions. Express provides error handling middleware defined with four arguments, error, req, res, next. Additionally, Global error events like process.on, uncaught exception, and process.on, unhandled rejection, help catch unhandled errors. However, relying solely on them is discouraged in production. Instead, use structured error handling throughout your code base. Question 8. What are the key advantages of using Node.js? Answer. Node.js offers several key advantages. 1. Asynchronous and non-blocking. It uses an event-driven model, making it efficient for input-output heavy tasks. 2. Single language. JavaScript is used on both client and server, allowing full-stack development. 3. Fast execution. Powered by Google's V8 engine, Node.js executes JavaScript quickly. 4. Scalability. Ideal for building scalable network applications due to its single-threaded event loop. 5. Rich Ecosystem NPM, Node's Package Manager, provides access to thousands of libraries. 6. Community Support A large, active community ensures constant improvement and resources. These features make Node.js a great choice for APIs, real-time apps, microservices, and more. Question 9. How does Node.js handle child processes and what are they used for? Answer. Node.js can spawn child processes to perform operations outside the main event loop using the child underscore process module. This is especially useful for CPU intensive tasks, which can block the single threaded event loop. There are several methods like exec, spawn, and fork. Exec runs a command and buffers the output. Spawn, streams data from a command in real time. Fork, is a specialized case for spawning Node.js processes with IPC, interprocess communication. Child processes enable Node.js to offload heavy tasks like data processing or calling system commands, keeping the main thread responsive. This approach is essential for optimizing performance in production environments. Question 10. What is clustering in Node.js and when should you use it? Answer. Clustering in Node.js is a technique used to improve performance by utilizing multiple CPU cores. Since Node.js is single-threaded, it can only use one core by default. The cluster module allows you to spawn child processes or workers that share the same server port. Each worker handles a portion of the incoming traffic, making the application scalable and efficient. Clustering is beneficial in CPU-bound applications or when handling high traffic. It improves reliability too if one worker crashes, others keep running. While clustering adds complexity, 
it's a powerful tool for enhancing throughput and resilience in large-scale Node.js applications. That's all for this video. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and hit that notification bell for more content. So you don't miss any upcoming video. And, if you have any questions or topics, you'd like us to cover in future videos. Please let us know in the comments below. Until next time, keep exploring and keep coding. Thanks for watching, and happy coding.